I'm here today in my kitchen at home because I'm gonna make for you guys some French macarons. So this video actually goes out to you, mom, if you're watching. As you guys might know, I live in Florida. My mom lives all the way in California. So I can't really do it with her side by side, but at least she can have this as a reference. So this should be really interesting. I'm actually a little bit nervous to see how they come out because I get, I'm so hard on myself. So if they don't turn out perfect, I'm gonna do it again, do it again, but it's just gonna be a process. So fingers crossed that they just turn out the first time. Let's get started. It's really important that you get a scale at home. This is only like $20 at the kitchen store, but it's so worth it so that you get accurate measurements because my recipe is in grams, so you do have to scale it out. I have just a basic recipe that's just calling for these few ingredients. I have my powdered sugar and my almond flour in here. So you could sift this if you don't have any type of a pulsator at home. I have one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pulse it because it's a little bit faster. And we're gonna pulse it on low just until it's incorporated and a little fluffy. So this is what you are looking for. It's like super fine and that only took two seconds versus sifting you have to stand there. Now you can do some fun flavors with macarons. I think that's one of the most beautiful parts about them is it's a blank canvas. You can color the batter, you can flavor the shells, you can make different fillings. But because, again, I'm so unsure about how this is gonna work for me at home, I'm just gonna make a plain, basic macaron, and I'll probably just do like a fun filling. I'm thinking of doing lemon for spring. I also got out my yellow dye, because I'm probably just gonna dye the batter yellow. I have my egg whites in my bowl. Make sure your bowl is super clean and free of anything, any oil, any debris in here. You want your egg whites to also be totally clean, no bits of egg yolk in there. I also let my egg whites come to room temperature, so they've been sitting out for like about an hour. It just helps them whip up a little bit faster. So I'm gonna put that onto my mixer. I also have my wire whip attachment. It's good to get a little cream of tartar in the eggs while you're whipping it. I don't actually even know if I have any, so let me see. I have cream of tartar. So I'm just gonna put a pinch of this. It just helps the eggs stay stiff when you're whipping them. We're gonna start whipping our egg whites here. Once they get a little bit whipped up is when I'll add the cream of tartar, just a pinch. I'm gonna wait for it to get about halfway whipped and then I'll slowly start adding in the sugar. I'm just gonna scrape all this powdered sugar in there. It's not a good idea to do it while the mixer's running. Turn it off and then turn it back on. All right, so it's been going for a little while. I'm just checking my meringue. So this is still a little bit too soft. I want it to be a little bit more firm. So I'm gonna keep on going. God, like look at that beautiful swirl. I hope you're getting a close up of this swirl. This is like, I just cannot believe that egg whites can do this. It's so beautiful and shiny and picturesque. Okay, enough ogling and now I'm gonna add my, I feel like that's pretty good. It reminds me of the Dairy Queen dollop. Okay, I'm gonna add some color. I did find some orange dye, so I'm actually gonna add a little bit of yellow and then a little orange to get the color just a tad darker. So a big old blob of this. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow. This type of color also reminds me of Easter. Like this is very like pastel Easter egg dye kind of color. All right, I think that's all I'm gonna add. So I'm just gonna put my dyes away. I'm gonna get my flour ready and we'll start this mixing method. So I pulsed it, but I just wanna be extra safe and just sift it in here too. Almond flour is pretty coarse, so it's not going to sift very nicely, but I just wanna get the gist of it. I know I'm getting a little bit close because it's starting to thin out a bit. So I'm just gonna lift the spatula and let some batter fall back into the bowl. And kind of just see how long it takes. So it's still taking a little bit of time and keeping its shape. 
Um, so I'm going to do a few more turns. When you go to pipe it and it's still keeping its exact shape, that's not going to be good for you because um, it'll get little uh, nipples on the top. What do you call it? Nipples. That comes from the pastry bag when you're piping it. So you don't want any lumps. You want it to smooth out, still keep its shape. That's why this is such a temperamental recipe. This all comes from trial and error. I can feel this in my arms, man. Do I look buff? So if you go any further than this, and you do the test of the dough back into the bowl and it spreads too fast, that means it's gonna spread too fast on the pan and it's not gonna really hold its shape. So you still need it to hold its shape, that's why you don't wanna over mix it. But you don't wanna under mix it either because it'll not bake properly. So I'm gonna get this into a piping bag and I have a number 11 round tip. I'm gonna line a baking pan with parchment paper and I'm gonna start piping. I do have a silicone mat, but I feel like my silicone mats conduct too much heat and I don't want these to get too brown on the bottom. So I'm gonna try just the parchment. And I did spray the bottom of the pan so that this sticks a little bit better. So these are just little, these are baby bags that I got at uh, Michael's. They come in a pack of like 10, it's only a couple dollars. my little round tip. All right. I'm gonna twist the end and poke it through here. That way when I'm filling the bag, none of the batter comes out. And I will use a cup to hold the bag. We have our batter in the bag. So now we're gonna get to piping. Tap the pan a couple times just to get some excess air bubbles out. The hardest part of the entire thing is I am gonna let it sit for like 30, 35 minutes, maybe even longer, it just depends on the temperature of your kitchen. But I wanna get a skin on the outside of this. So the way to check for that is when you go to touch it, if it doesn't stick to your fingers, and then that means you're ready. But the skin is what's gonna give you those the beautiful feet along the macaron because it's gonna have nowhere to grow but up, and then all the little feet at the bottom. So we're gonna let this sit for a little while. Um, I'm probably gonna pipe just one more pan, and we'll see how they turn out. In case you are a perfectionist and you want to make sure that they're all the same size, you can make a really quick, easy stencil at home using, I just happen to have circle cutters, but you can use any like round thing that you have in the house, like uh, a milk caplet or anything like that. So I'm just going to take a Sharpie, Keep this as a stencil, and then I'll just put another piece of parchment on top of it. You don't want Sharpie in your food. So you can kind of still see through. And then all I gotta do is just hold on to the parchment and pull the stencil. There you go. Some uniform macarons. So I'm checking for the skin. They've been sitting for like 30 minutes now. So what you gotta do, you get up real close. You just put your finger lightly on it. And they, my finger's coming up really clean. That means we have a nice skin. Now, if you're living somewhere where it's a little bit more humid, which I mean, we are, but they might need a little bit longer than 30 minutes. So just find something to do in the meantime, like make your filling, make a sandwich, drink some tea, but be patient. So I think I'm gonna bake only one tray at a time. So I'm gonna do this one first because I piped these first. They've had a little bit more time to sit and get a skin. All right, so let's take a close look here. They have like some really nice feet. So the good way to test it is if you're able to lift it up with ease, and that means the bottom is completely set. If you try to lift it up and it's pulling to the pan still, then you might wanna just add another minute or two in the oven time. Beautiful. So they're not hollow, which is good. They have a crispy crust. And then this looks like a chewy almond center. Let's try it. Oh my God. Perfectly chewy. I'm just gonna make my second batch. 
did it. The feet is this fun little ruffle here at the bottom of the macaron. This is like the iconic detail of what makes a macaron a macaron. And if you don't see that, then that means it's wrong and you don't eat it. I'm just excited that we did it. Like we freaking mastered the macaron at home, in a kitchen, in an apartment. So anytime you're feeling scared to make these or you mess up one time, just keep trying. That is my best advice for anyone that's doing this at home. Like I as a professional still make mistakes, but the point is is how you react to it and just keep trying until you tweak it and get it right. Because there's nothing more satisfying than like having a perfect product come out. So now all that's left to do is the fun part. I'm gonna make some lemon buttercream filling and then I might even decorate the tops of them too. If anybody ever has any questions and they're making this recipe, please comment. I'll be more than happy to respond and give you some advice. I'm just gonna do a lemon American buttercream. taste it before we decide to alter anything else in here. It's really lemony. I made a really strong filling for a plain macaron shell, so I think I'm going to keep it like this. You can also dye the colors, the center, like a different color if you wanted to dye it so it's more yellow or orange or whatever you want. I'm leaving these plain and natural. I'm gonna make a variation right now. So I'm gonna make a ring of the lemon on the outside. This is a little wild, folks, but I'm gonna get a little strawberry jam. And I'm just gonna put it in the center. So now you have a strawberry lemonade macaron. So if you wanna do fun things like that, the options are like seriously limitless. You can do so many things. I'm only gonna make a few of these and then the rest I'm gonna save because the macaron shells hold really well in plastic wrap. You can hold them for like four or five days. They're not gonna go bad. That way you don't waste, make a bunch of treats that go bad. You can save the shells and just make a few at a time. to do for the filling and now I'm gonna decorate the tops just because I have a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna do a couple of these to look like little Easter chicks just because I'm in the mood right now for Easter. I chose a really ugly one to practice on just to see like how it would look so it's a little lopsided but this is gonna be my design just a little simple little chick. So I'm using um, a very fine paintbrush and then I have some just gel colors at home. This is brown but it's gonna probably show up black so don't worry about that as long as it's dark. So I'm gonna do all of the eyes first. That way I don't have to worry about cleaning the brush between every single macaron. So I'll do all of the same color and then I'll go back and do the little beaks. So I'm doing the beaks and the little, uh, little feet next. So same brush, uh, I'm using orange gel color. I feel like after staring at these for a while, I start thinking they don't look like chickens and they look like snowmen. But, you know, which you could do if it was a white macaron, but it's a yellow one. So they're gonna be chicks. I feel like I'm the freaking Bob Ross of decorating right now. All right, so that really was it for these simple macarons. I'm gonna give these little chickies a try. Here goes nothing. Mmm, oh my god. See that strawberry? Oh my god. I seriously nailed it on this one. Like, they're not crunchy at all on the top. Just a slight little crisp with the chewy almond flavored center. And the tangy lemon buttercream. So good. So simple, so freaking delicious. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. I'd be totally happy to answer them. Um, and mom, like call me, please let me know how these work out for you. I know you're making these soon. Happy baking. Mm -hmm.